Andrew, I do not like you. So to decide who will lead this illustrious news video, let's have a game of rock, paper, scissors. Are you oh, ready? Do One, two, three, boom. One, two, three. <laughs> what? As player wins everything, Andrew leads the video. Here are your headlines, courtesy of Andrew Hodkinson. We have new details on Brock Lesnar's WWE contract. We have an update on Sasha Banks' return. And the son of a WWE Hall of Famer joins the Performance Center. Find out who in a little bit. So Brock Lesnar came back at SummerSlam Ross. Yes, he did, news leader. <sighs> That's it. That's it. That's is the it? news. I'll see you in a bit. No. That's the sort of professional analysis we all tune in for, isn't it? <laughs> yeah. So no, Brock Lesnar turned to, uh, turned up at SummerSlam, obviously at the end uh, against Roman Reigns and John Cena. Out comes the boy, squares up against Roman Reigns, and we've heard little bits about his contract, obviously on Wrestling Observer Radio. Dave Meltzer noting that Lesnar has signed on for eight to twelve dates for the remainder of his contract. This doesn't, however, Ross, include TV appearances. It has been reported that Lesnar has signed a contract until 2023. Furthermore, Meltzer is reporting that it also could appear that Lesnar reigns this storyline that kicked off at mm -hmm. SummerSlam 2021 could be a slow burner. Woo. Like that game of rock, paper, scissors in the fire that beats everything. That's not even a thing. You could have done Dynamite. It could be a sl Shut up, man. It could be a slow burner towards WrestleMania season. <laughs> Apparently, uh, WWE had two different plans mm. for Reigns at WrestleMania, with matches against Big Brock Lesnar and his big man, Bun, and The Rock. Can you smell it, Ross? Which one would you prefer out of the two? If you had to decide what Brock Lesnar smelled of, what would Brock Lesnar smell of? At the moment, because of his butcheriness, uh, probably meat. Just, there one there. Me. Rock smells of pancakes. We all know that. Brock Lesnar, he smells of meat. That is the news. <laughs> Goodbye. See you later. <laughs> um, no, they're two big, two big massive matches. Yeah. And I said this on the reactions video with you. Despite the fact it is Brock versus Roman once again, which we mm -hmm. saw in 2015, 17, yeah. 18, 19, so many times before, the fresh liquor paint on the Tribal Chief, the fresh liquor paint on Bork the Viking, as I like to call yeah. him now, it's something I want to see. It's amazing what a new gimmick who can get, like, sort of a gimmick that can get you captivated, mm -hmm. get you invested in someone once again, can make you want to see a, a match you've seen so many times before. I agree, and the dynamic now, obviously, with uh, Heyman teaming with Roman Reigns, and now Lesnar on his own, then pushing Lesnar more as a baby face, it could be really interesting to see the dynamic there, because I think before, just nobody was behind behind anybody when those two got together. Mm -hmm. But now I think with just wrestling being a bit more exciting again, with crowds coming back, obviously with, with Punk at Dynamite, and now you, you come on over here, Brock, and you get Brock back and everyone's just buzzing again. I'm feeling ready for it, and I think everybody else is as well. And just going off this week's SmackDown, where of course we had Paul Heyman, it looks like the Usos are trying to screw Paul Heyman mm. out of whatever they're called these days. I've got Hardy family office going through my head, and that's just not right, is it? <laughs> the bloodline, that's right, Ross, isn't it? You, Idiot is fine. Um, they're telling Paul Heyman, oh, how did you know Brock was coming back? You said ah. us in the back, didn't you, Paul? Oh. And then Paul's like, no, Roman told you to go to the back. I had no idea. So it looks like the Usos could be, you know, so it looks like Lesnar's the player is what I'm saying, yeah. basically. And uh, we have a bit more to add on there. It was a last minute deal to bring in Brock mm -hmm. Lesnar to SummerSlam 2021, which apparently was in response to CM Punk's AEW Rampage debut. Ooh. Hell surprise, as the French might say. Now we have an update from Sasha Banks, don't we, Andrew? We do. Of PWInsider.com. Yeah. Is so PW Insider have been saying that we've been told that the hope should all go well is that Banks will return to the road for the company the weekend of the 10th of. No, uh, sorry, 10th. 10th of September, I'll get it right with oh, these. Yeah, it's American. Sorry, it's the American numbers. numbers. Yes, yes, yes. Uh, which would be the Super Smackdown taping in New York City in Madison Square Garden. Uh, nothing is 100% though until it happens, but that is the current expectation internally. Of course, Sasha Banks was promoted to be at <laughs> SummerSlam 2021, <laughs> right up until she wasn't. Which was scandalous in my opinion until they this all like, oh, we've just lied to you for so long. Here's a lollipop in the shape of I Becky just, Lynch. Please no. enjoy the lollipop and forget about the lies. Yeah, but then could we enjoy the lollipop? No, we, we couldn't, enjoy could the we? Lollipop because, because it was a squash match. It in was like one of those one of those cheap lollipops that don't last too long. It was, it really was. Not a chopper chops. No, they're good then. Not a big one from Blackpool Beach. One of them like slide whistle ones that break off. And yeah, exactly, that's the yeah, sort of lollipop so, we're speaking about so, here. So it, we we saw sort of um, it was a rumor on Reddit, and I don't think of well we'll mention it because why not? We've got nothing else to go. <laughs> saying that Sasha Banks was doing some sort of live Instagram thing in the days leading up to SummerSlam mm. 2021 and she, it appeared that she had some sort of like, like cold symptoms like yeah. a bit of a cough, bit of a, a stuffy nose and stuff like that so hopefully Sasha Banks is okay mm -hmm. and that report would indicate she's going to be back in the not too distant future
feature. What's next up, Andrew? Oh, we've got the latest on Adam Cole, baby's contract situation. So Fightful reporting here. Adam Cole's WWE contract expired last Friday, and we have confirmed with sources within WWE that he has not re-signed with the company. He is now 100% a free agent. Oh, you know it. <laughs> 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 WWE sources also indicated that Cole is expected to field offers, and that he has not uh, that he was not at SmackDown last Friday either, and he was not meeting with Vince McMahon as many had suspected when he cancelled his stream. Fightful will work to gain more information on Cole's contract talks. Oh, Ross. I am excited for this. Oh yeah! I am so excited <laughs> for this. You can't tell. Adam Cole, one of my favourite wrestlers of all time, and now just the possibilities are endless for that boy. However, I, personally, I do think it's going to be something on the AEW side, perhaps. What are you what feeling? What day is it? It's Tuesday. It's isn't Tuesday. It? It's not Wednesday. <gasps> Wednesday is Dynamite Day, and I would Ooh. assume Adam Cole could well turn up on Dynamite tomorrow. He could well turn up at All Out in Chicago on Saturday. He could well turn up at uh, the big New York show. He could turn up at the one they're doing in Florida. He could, he could, but anyway. Imagine, imagine, right? Light the fuse. Boom. I'll bring the boom. Oh, if they start, if they cut the theme off like that, it's just yeah. like, cool, going boom. Boom. Oh my oh, God, oh, we've wait, written you, it for him. Sexy fan fiction Hell like the US. <laughs> <laughs> <You> kinky man. <laughs> Pitches. <laughs> NXT is returning to live shows. This one comes to us from PW Insider, who says NXT will return to live broadcasts as of the, uh, the 14th of September. Those mm. backwards dates once again. <laughs> Buggering us right yeah, away. Yeah, always uh, WS Live NXT episodes are scheduled weekly going forward at that point. Yes. So it looked like the end. It was nigh for NXT with the reports. It was. Coming, it was just before SummerSlam 2021, wasn't it? Saying mm -hmm. NXT was not only going to stop signing indie people, but it was also going to change its look, get a new logo, which yeah. I think looks a bit, bit, well, a bit suspect, a bit, it's a bit, bit childish. Artistic. A bit childish, it's, isn't it's it? It's a bit artistic. It's Disney. Yeah, it oh. really does. I'm not, I'm not a fan. And also the reports saying that uh, the, the, the live shows would stop, it would become a pre-recorded show. But thankfully, one of the those things it would appear is now extinct so that's that's a good thing that is a good thing but then again I kind of a part of me was thinking that with the tape stuff we get more long form storytelling maybe this time it's just going to be hit point to point like it kind of was when NXT went live on USA and just stories were kind of just rolling over really fast there was no real build up to anything no real consequence I, I personally I didn't think but I mean we'll see what what happens because this is going to be just be a new seemingly new change for NXT so we'll see what uh, what WWE have planned for it in the future it's a really interesting one because mm. those, uh, those reports of sort of people who were going to the tapings and being told don't you t uh, reveal any spoilers how yeah. dare you and that was a big to do because obviously if you just write a good wrestling show you shouldn't really care too much about exactly now should you that's it that's it then you go back to the glory days of NXT on the network. That was a taped show, wasn't it? it was. I guess it's very different when it's on the on the TV rather than the network. Yeah, I guess, I, guess, I guess so. I guess so. I don't. That is a weird. I didn't even think about that before. Yeah. But yeah, that is very strange. But that doesn't matter anymore. It's not going to be taped. It's going to be live, and Woo! that's a good thing, in my humble mm, opinion. Despite the fact that they're just going to hire just athletes to be wrestlers, which is surely not the way that wrestling works. No, but like the breakout tournament stars that they've got in, hopefully they do utilize those more because they are very good. Obviously, you've got Joe Gacy in there now, and Joe Gacy. Is a fantastic wrestler. There's so many good people that they have brought in that have the potential just to be built up and made into stars, but hopefully they keep with that and hopefully they do build those up rather than just like toss them to the side and We'll see. We'll see, won't we'll we? See. But speaking of NXT performance centre superstars, we have Woo! some brand new signers. We'll take alternate names, Andrew, if that's okay with you. Okay, I'll dokey. kick things off oh, as we reveal the newest recruit recruits, the accoutrement <laughs> at the NXT performance centre. First of all, we have Bobby Stevenson, And you might recognise the second name there because he is the brother of Olympic gold medalist and straight to hell alumni. It's on the Whoa. channel right now. Go and watch it. It's done criminally low views, let Bless me tell him. you. It's uh, Bobby Stevenson. He's six foot tall and he's 220 pounds. Woo! We've also got, Ross, we've got Ben Buchanan, former Alabama State High School wrestling champion, six foot four, 250 pounds, and the son of former WWF star, obviously, Bo Buchanan. And what do we all know about Bo Buchanan, Andrew? That he's a big man. He stole the show at WrestleMania 2000. Go oh, he back was and so watch, good. Go back oh and watch God. WrestleMania 2000. Bo Buchanan was the best wrestler he on was. that card, so not much to live up to there. Ben Buchanan. No 
precious son. <laughs> then we have Brady Booker, who was a middle line ba- middle line backer at the University of South Dakota, also a skilled archer, standing at six foot three and weighing two hundred and forty five pounds. These are all bigger men, aren't they? Watch out, Damian Priest, if he's an archer. An actual archer. Yeah, fake one. We've got oh this is this is gonna get me. We've got Jessica Wynilko. Jessica Wynilko uh, is a 21 year old gymnast, bodybuilder, and CrossFit athlete. Joshua Dawkins, who was trained by Devon Dudley, and the nephew of NBA legend Daryl Dawkins, and he's six foot one. Oh, tall boy, tall boy. And finally, we have the son of a WWE Hall of Famer in Joseph Fatu. He is the younger brother of Jimmy and Jey Uso and the son of Rikishi. He's six foot two, 240 pounds. Big slab Ooh. of meat. The Samoan Dynasty continues, it, it looks does. like, in NXT. So let's see what happens to those lads and lasses in the coming years. I don't know what to say there, Andrew. That, I mean, you pretty much summed it up well. Let's see what happens let's to those see what lads happens. and lasses in Who the coming years. Who knows what might happen in the World Wrestling Federation. That is it for News Video 1. I've been Ross Twelle from Cultaholic Wrestling. He has been... Andrew Hodgkinson, also from Cultaholic Wrestling. We will be battling it out in the All Out Predictions competition, where the loser, of course, will have to do a punishment. Wonderful. Well, like I haven't already done enough. And just to, make, just, to, just to see Mark in your diaries, on the All Out Predictions video, which will be going live later this week, mm-hmm. the winner from the NXT TakeOver 36 predictions will be getting a prize. And who was the winner? You. It was me. So that'll be getting open at the start of the All Out Predictions. Thank you for watching this video. We'll be back with you more later on. Let me tell you. My voice goes a bit weird. I've been Ross. He's been Andrew. Thank you for watching. Goodbye.